as I have to take a sip of water. <laughs> New souls making mistakes, hoping to learn what is true and fake. Once upon a time, each of us was given a new soul, our spark of life to grow, to tend, to nurture. Our spirit of life is part of the great spirit, ours to care for through the twists and turns of life. It is ever-changing and growing into some new shape, each of us trying to figure out how best to care for our spark learning how to use our inner compass to guide our life. Imagine if you could hold your spark in front of you. What would it look like in this moment? You might know, notice that some things, they make your spark glow stronger. What that is, well, that can be different for each of us at any given moment, and it makes it challenging to know yourself and to know others. But if you listen, you may notice that the things that bring you joy, the things that make you happy, that make your spark glow, might be finding time with those you love, or just being thankful for that spark you have been given to tend in this place at this time. It also might be roller coasters and video games, too. What makes your spark glow brighter? Call it out. Share it with us. Don't worry if it's silly. Singing. Singing. Nature. Nature. Funny movies. Funny movies. Nice. I know there's some video games out there. I see those kids. Now, if you can imagine each of us carrying our sparks around while we move through the world, and then when we bring our sparks together with care and kindness, we can illuminate more. There is more energy, more insight, just like when we lift our voices together with intention and sing. We are louder, we are clearer. Sharing our spark can bring joy and all our sparks together can be stronger. That's the reason we come here together in faith community. We co-create a way to support one another. And it's why we celebrate and dedicate ourselves to the children who join this church. Our inner compasses, they're also beacons for others as we learn to be human together. We learn first by example, by modeling from those around us. The people or the creatures or the places that kindle and grow your spirit, well, they're a kind of illuminator. Illuminators radiate love and respect that convey that you are unique and held and even an honored human mystery unfurling itself on a journey through time. We can illuminate each other. We are brighter together. Unless we don't, because of course sometimes we know we just bump up against each other without care and kindness, even blowing out each other's spark a bit sometimes forgetting to notice even those we love. Even those illuminators in our life are humans making mistakes. In religious education, the children, youth, and adults create a covenant at the beginning of each year. It is a set of promises, kind of like rules, that we make to one another to help everyone feel safe and know that they are respected. This is one way we center our shared value of love. And it's our goal to be illuminators with and for each other. And after we do that, we have the most essential question to this process. We ask, what should we do when we break the covenant? What should we do when we mess up by the way, my favorite child response to this answer is, 
Ask the person if they need a break. We do this because we know that we cannot always live up to our promises. We are all humans making mistakes. And being human means saying, oops, I did it again and again and again. I used to think I would make less mistakes when I was older and I knew better, but all the adults here, they know, no, that's just not true. <laughs> It turns out the mistakes keep coming, different kinds of mistakes, but some the same. I am still clumsy. Sometimes I rush when I know I should slow down, and I still really like, really dislike making mistakes. As uncomfortable as they continue to be, it turns out that making mistakes are learning opportunities. We can learn the most when we intentionally mess up and fix our mistakes. It's called the during effect. Making mistakes can help us remember, learn, and transform ourselves. But when the mistakes are hurtful and they dim the spark of those around us, well then how do we come back to being in right relationship with ourselves and each other? In his story, Nick's oops was a moment of forgetfulness that broke the trust in his relationship with his parents. Regaining their trust, fixing that relationship, it took time, and it began with saying, I'm sorry. Reverend Dina spoke thoughtfully last week on the process of making amends. Making amends almost always begins with accepting responsibility and a sincere apology. In American Sign Language, the sorry sign is making a fist and laying it over your heart and then rubbing it in a circle a few times. And at the same time, you show your sincerity with the expression on your face. Let's try that together. Make a fist, place it over your heart, and make a circle a few times. I love that sign. It seems to express something more than words, more than I am sorry. From my tender heart to your vulnerable heart, here we are in genuine relationship, making mistakes. Apologizing, well, we know it takes courage. And the root word for courage is from the French cuir, which means heart. And it sounds kind of like cure, as in restoration. Rebuilding trust in a relationship takes time, and it can feel big, even too monumental. Yet researcher and author Brene Brown confirms that trust is built on little things over time like the expression on another's face when they say, I'm sorry. The data, she says, is crystal clear. Trust is built in very small moments. When looking at research examples of people, when they talked about trust, they say things like, I trust my neighbor because if something's going on with my kid, it doesn't matter what she's doing. She'll come over and help me. Or, I trust him because he'll ask for help when he needs it. How many of us are better at giving help than asking for help? Right? So asking for help, it's one of those moments. Professor Dr. John Gottman, who's been studying relationships for 30 years, confirms this. Trust is built in the smallest of moments. He calls them sliding door moments. When you can slide the door open to another, illuminate their spark with your care, your listening, by being real about your needs, maybe asking for help, and mistakes, and hope to repair and transform for the greater good. Friends, though the work moving forward will always be complicated, some of the solutions are not. Just showing up in the small moments 
for one another again and again and saying oops and being grateful and open to that transformation, it is enough to begin. May we move forward in gratitude and in grace together, one small moment at a time. Blessed be.